church. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, my sister Deb here is going to open us up with a scripture. Go ahead. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth I call you. I call as my heart goes from me. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. For you, God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Increase the days of the king's life, his years for many generations. May he be enthralled in God's presence forever. Appoint your love and faithfulness to protect him. Then I will ever sing in praise of your name and fulfill my vows day after day. That's Amen. Psalm 61. Amen. Amen. Father, um, you are our strong tower, God. Would you lead us to the rock that's higher than I? The one that we can run to, the one that we can hide in, the one that is safe, the one that is firm unmoving, unwavering. I pray, Lord, that you help us to put our trust in you, the rock of ages, the cornerstone, the one who the builders rejected. I pray that we would put our trust, our hope, our faith in Christ Jesus. All praise, all glory, all honor belongs to you, the worthy one, the one who hears our cry, the one who's near his people. Emmanuel, God with us. God, thank you that you are but a breath away, God. God, thank you that you hear our cry. Father, thank you that even in our lowest pit, God, you can pull us up, you can pull us out. There's no soul too far gone. There's no heart too hard for the, for the Lord our Lord, strong in battle, mighty in battle, strong to save, whose arm is not too short that he can't reach us. So we pray that over those we love that we know have gone astray, God. We pray that over those who reject you, over those who have uh, walked out of the grace, who resist the grace of God, I pray that your arm would reach the depths of their hearts. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Jesus. Every heart. Every heart. Lord, you know. You know. You know. Send your spirit, oh God. Pour out your spirit, Lord. Move upon your children. what I long for. Holiness is what I need. And holiness, holiness is what you want from me. So take my heart. So take my heart. And for Take my heart, 
what I long for. Righteousness, it's what I need. Oh, righteousness, righteousness, it's what you want from me. Desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. boundless grace the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame the cross has spoken I am forgiven the King Great. 
with a million stars yet still he holds my heart thank you Jesus our Father in heaven the light of his salvation oh how good is he breath of almighty before and behind me oh how good is he how good is he forgiveness is in bound by circumstance oh he's the god of second chance how good is he Sinner's heart is all that I can bring. Oh, still he welcomes me. Almighty, 
Every word that comes from your mouth. You can have my heart, Lord. You can have my will. You can have my life. It's all. so good to me you're all I need you're all we need teach us what dependency looks like upon the Lord help me to walk in the you who guards my steps you lead me you guide me Lord it's not my will it's not my way it's the way of Jesus help me to walk in your commands Lord help me to walk according to your word me to walk the narrow road, the way that's hard, the way that few will go, help me to go after you, Jesus.
knees together. And I, I, I'm desperate for you. And I, Yes, just to cherish the moments that we have to be reminded of how much we need you. The things that drive us to our knees teach us to hold on to those moments so that when we reach the plateaus, the high tops, God, that we don't forget how much we need you. Teach us how to persevere in prayer. Teach us how to seek your face. Teach us how to throw off the things that so easily entangle us and want to trip us up. Teach us how to pursue you at all costs. Teach us how to seek you regardless of the reputation that it brings. Just how to wear your banner above our heads and how to wave it with pride. Teach us how to walk in the freedom that you died for. Teach us how that we can come home every time we fall. There's no shame in your presence. There's no thing you don't know. 
there's no thought you haven't heard in our heads. We are bare before you. Teach us desperation. Teach us to pant for you, to long for you, like a deer that was pants and for water. Teach us to long for the presence of God, for the word of God, for the things of God, not just knowledge, but to know you, the true, the living God. Teach us how to seek you, not just for experience, but to to know you, the true, the living God. The one who redeems, the one who revives, the one who saves, the one who restores, the one who pulled us up out of the miry pit, the one who set our feet on solid ground, the one who continues to work things in and out of us, the one who continues to shape and mold us, the patient one, the gracious one, the merciful one. How beautiful you are. How good you are. You could love a sinner like me. How kind you are, God. How blessed I am to know that I am yours and you are mine. I am my beloved. He is mine. How we love you, Lord. Teach us to love you, Lord. With all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. With every ounce of our being, God, let it love the Lord. every idol would fall down before you in our lives. That you would have your rightful place in the throne of our hearts. Teach us how to turn from sin and pursue you with all we have. And I Desperate for you, and I, I'm lost without you. As Justin was singing, I kept thinking of the lyrics of this old song called, All I Need is the Air That I Breathe. And it made me think that God is the air that we breathe. And we need that air. We need to be constantly breathing God in. And I was thinking of the many people who suffer with asthma and how when you have an asthma attack, it's just so scary because you just can't catch your breath. That's how we feel when we don't have God. We have like a spiritual asthma attack. We feel like we can't breathe. Lord, we just come before you in the name of Jesus and we're so desperate for you. We're desperate to breathe your air. Open up our lungs. We rebuke the spiritual asthma in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to just come inside of us, fill our lungs, open up our airways, help us to be able to breathe you in. Take a breath of your life, Lord. Rejuvenate us, refresh us, give us a reason to want to live. Help us to want it even if we don't want it for ourselves. Help us to want it for us and in turn, give us your desires, Lord. Help us to desire to live for you, no matter what 
things look like. We love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Good evening, church. You may be seated. We have a couple of announcements tonight. Rally Point Men's Free Breakfast, Saturday, September 9th at 10 a.m. Free food and lots of fellowship and an awesome word from Pastor Wes. Tomorrow, Scalisi Seed Group, Friday, August 25th at 6.30 p.m. And we will be discussing 1 Corinthians. Come for fellowship and hearing the word. Aspire, Sunday, August 27th, Beach and Brickley's Ice Cream. Meet at Roger Wheeler Beach at 5 p.m., followed by Brickley's Narragansett. I don't know about you, but that's my favorite place on earth. Justin, do you want to say anything else about that? And could the ushers please come forward while we take our tithes and offerings? Please stand while we pray over the offering. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you for the funds that you have given us. We ask you, Lord, to bless us financially, not because of anything we want for ourselves, but so we can sow into your kingdom and expand your kingdom and secure our home in your kingdom. We just thank you, Father God, for tonight. We thank you for Pastor Wes, who is going to give your word tonight. We just pray for your spirit of anointing to fall upon him, Lord. Help him to be led by the Holy Spirit and not by his own flesh and not by his own rules, Lord, but change his message if you have to, Lord, because you know that there's someone out there who needs to hear something tonight. We all do. And we just pray, Lord, that you open up our hearts. Prepare our hearts to hear a message from you tonight. And we just lift up all of the people who are watching tonight. Let them be open. Let them receive from you and whoever may be staying home for any reason, we just pray, Lord, that you bring them back with your word tonight, Lord. Fill our house again, Lord God. And we just pray against any technological glitches to prevent people who are at home from hearing your word and seeing your word, Lord. We love you and we honor you and you, we thank you for everything that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. You're Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Yes, you're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No, the song says, I will build my life around you, Jesus. Lord, that you would, you would be the ruler of my life. Lord, that you would, you would ordain every step, every movement. Lord, that Lord, without you, Lord, there would be no life. Precious God, I pray that be our hearts tonight. That without you, Jesus, there would be no life. We need you so desperately and we, and we love you so dearly. So, Lord, may you continue to move here in this service. Holy Spirit, have your way. Lord, we just want to be... Uh, Lord, we just want to sit at your feet and just hear you. And, Lord, and just feel you and just be in your presence, Lord, tonight. So may you continue to move in this service, Lord. May you speak through your manservant to your manservant. Lord, that your people's hearts might be opened. We love you so, so very much. Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord some praise. Amen, amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. How's everybody doing this evening? Good. Everybody good? good? Long week or what? Like, what's going on? A long week or good week or a tough week? Right, no matter how your week is going, right, you can guarantee that when you come into the house of God, you're going to be filled up. Amen? Yes. Amen. I have a word for you tonight. Uh, the title of my word is of God, not of men. Going to be looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 2. This might be familiar to some of you. Verses 1 through 5. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Uh, can we all stand as I read the word of God? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I need you, Lord. And I, when I came to you, brothers did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and, and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Father, have your way here. Spirit of God, may you move upon us. Lord, may you be put front and center. Lord, may they see you and hear you. Lord, for it is all about you. It's all because of you. So, Lord, we dedicate this to you. We love you, Jesus. Have your way here in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. You know, what's interesting here about this verse, uh, right away, Paul tells the people that he did not come to glorify himself or to start a religious fan club, but he came to glorify God. You know, the philosophers and teachers of that time would go around and, and they would use their wisdom and they would use their eloquent speech in order to get followers. The city of Corinth was filled with such people. Paul did not depend on eloquent speech or clever, or clever arguments. He simply declared God's word and the power of God. He was an ambassador, not a Christian salesperson. And as, as we look at social media today, as we look at uh, different things that are happening around the world today, we see this happening all over the place today in our world and in our society. 
We see that, that people come and they, they, they want to come out with their eloquent speech. They want to come out with, with the way that they speak their, their words in order to get the people to move. But I, I love what Paul says here. Paul says, I did not come with eloquent speech. I did not come with wisdom. I came preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now imagine that. Paul. Everybody knows Paul. <laughs> and, and here's the thing about Paul. Here's a, Paul was educated by one of the, the leading teachers of his day. So Paul could have come in with, with, with the depth of knowledge that he had about Scripture. He could have come in and told them everything that they did wrong. And he could have spoken words that would have made everybody go, ooh and ah and wow. But instead, he came in preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, there's something about the power of the cross that saves people, that breaks yokes, that tears down strongholds. There's something about the power of the cross that allows us to be set free. And so often, we get caught up with giftings, we get caught up with, with bright arguments, and we miss Jesus Christ. We miss the gospel of God that came in order that we might be set free. And as I was reading this from Paul, I'm like, wow, you know, Paul is one of like my favorite people in the Bible because of all the things that he's done, right? But he, he did not, he could have, but he did not come with eloquent speech. He didn't come with wisdom. He just came with Jesus. He just came with Jesus out front and center. And through that, the Holy Spirit came in and the power of God rested upon the people. So that tells me that, that I don't have to come and I don't have to be before you, even just up here, but it doesn't even matter if I'm here. If someone's speaking to you about the gospel, if they're sitting at your, your living room table with you about the gospel, it doesn't have to be about um, uh, the way that I put it or how I put it, but it has to be about me putting Jesus first and allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and change the hearts of men. I look on YouTube, and I see all these big names, and, and I see how they come out, and it's a, a performance, and I wonder how many people are getting saved, how many lives are being changed. And, and, and don't get me wrong, because there are those that are, are very eloquent. There are those that, that speak the gospel, and they put Jesus out front, and they have the gift of speech and the gift of or, or, oration, oration, and they speak the word powerfully, and people's lives are changed. But then there are those that depend on their ability to tickle your ears, to get you to say, ooh, and ah, and wow. But there's nothing in their content. There's nothing in what they're saying. And because of it, people are being led astray. And that's, that's heavy on my heart. Because, because if I had my way, everyone would find Jesus Christ, everyone would fall into the Spirit of God, and everyone would be saved by His grace. I often wonder how many of us are being led astray and don't even know it. So, so I was looking at this, and I'm reading this, and I'm going, okay, so, so what can we learn here? What is it that we can pull out of this so that we can be better people, so we can be better Christians? <laughs> you know, I'm reminded of a story. Uh, a certain uh, church, they had a service, and um, behind their pulpit, they had a, sta a stained glass window of Jesus Christ on the cross. And, and one day, the, the pastor wasn't there, so they had a guest speaker speak. And the guest speaker was much shorter than the original pastor who passes the church. So the, as the guest speaker is speaking, there's this little girl, and she's listening, and she's watching, and she's, you know, attentive to what the speaker is saying. And then after a while, she kind of looks at her mom, and she goes, hey, mom, where is the guy who used to stand up there 
so that we could not see Jesus. When I read that, I was just like, whoa, I prayed to God. I prayed to God that whenever I give a word or when, whenever I stand before you, that it's not me blocking Jesus, but it's Jesus front and center in front of you saying, here he is. Because we, we can't fall prey to being fooled by those who just want followers versus those who want people saved. Amen? So as I was looking at this, I was like, okay, what can we learn? What can we learn from this? What can we look at here in order to be better Christians and to not get fooled? See, to me, this takes the sermon on behalf of the listener. We have to dissect between what is acting and what is heart. We must dissect what is eloquent speech and what is good content. And most importantly, we must dissect when the spirit is there and when he is not. So the question that I have for you is how do we discern the word of God when we hear it? As I was reading this and thinking about this passage, I see three ways that we can discern the word of God when we hear it. First, we must listen for Jesus. Does the speaker or the person sharing with us have Jesus front and center? Then we must look for humility. Does the person sharing come from a place of humility or from something else? And thirdly, and finally, we must watch for the demonstration. See, our hearts should testify to what is being said and not the tickling of our ears, but the spirit that dwells amongst the person that's sharing the word. Spirit must speak to spirit. So can we talk about those three things tonight? Hallelujah. Let's listen for Jesus. The scripture says, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul said it well. He did not come trying to uh, direct the people. He came in knowing Jesus. Now, there's one thing to have knowledge of Jesus, but there's a, another whole thing to know Jesus. See, he came in because he knew Jesus, and because he knew Jesus, he let Jesus be front and center. He didn't try to wow the people with his words. See, I don't, I don't want you to leave here saying, wow, what a great sermon Pastor West did. I want you to leave here saying, wow, what a great God I serve. Jesus has to be front and center. He has to be. See, if, if, if all the scriptures point to him, if all the scriptures are talking about him, then why shouldn't our sermons be about him? Why shouldn't we, we, we hear sermons that are being preached about Jesus Christ? One of the best things that I've ever done in my life is I went to this seminar, um, and, and uh, Pastor Simbler from Brooklyn Tabernacle was speaking. And he did a great lecture. But the thing that stuck in my brain, and it's stuck and it's still with me to till this, till this day, is that he said, all of you young pastors, you're out there and you have some great ideas on how to preach some great topics on what to preach about. He goes, but always end with Jesus. And I was like, whoa. I want, that's something that's stuck in my mind, to always end with Jesus. It doesn't matter what the topic is. The whole Bible is about him. So it doesn't matter what the topic is. If, if we must end with Jesus. Jesus has to be in there somewhere. So as we're listening, uh, and it, it doesn't just apply to people that are preaching the word. It could be someone that's sharing the word with you at your kitchen table. It could be somewhere at a Bible study. Wherever it is that you are hearing the word of God, we should be listening for Jesus. He's the one that set the captives free. So if Jesus is the one that set the captives free, should he not be the one that we're speaking about? See, I, I alone cannot set you free. As much as, you know, Pastor Wes and, you know, I've, all the things I've done in my life, going to war and, and playing football and all that stuff, right? Great, hoorah, but I cannot set you free. The only one that can do that is Jesus Christ. He has done that for you. So why shouldn't our words, why shouldn't our speech why shouldn't our lives reflect Jesus? We must listen 
to see if Jesus is up front, if Jesus is the main point, if we're pointing to the cross and not to us. We have to listen for Jesus. And Paul, as eloquent of a speaker as he was, Paul, the crucifier of Christians, he came in humbly speaking Jesus Christ and him crucified. Man, you know, when I just think about that, how powerful that is. I don't think that we truly understand and get how powerful that is. That is so powerful that he came in and he preached, Jesus Christ crucified. <laughs> that is powerful. That's all you need. That is all that you need. We can end this right now by saying, hey, guys, you know, Jesus Christ, he came, he lived for you. He did many things and many miracles, but the most important thing that he did for you was that he died for you. Because by his dying for you, you got saved. Salvation came. Freedom came. Grace came. Right? And because of that, you're set free. You no longer have to be held down by any strongholds. You no longer have to be held down by the enemy that's trying to control you. You no longer are captive of sin nature. All of a sudden, now you're free. And if you ain't clapping and standing on your feet right now, you've totally missed it. Jesus Christ crucified in the cross. That's it. So we should listen. Is, it, is, is, is the thing that I'm listening to, is the thing that I'm hearing, do I hear Jesus in there somewhere? Or am I hearing something else? See, God hates pride, right? And, and pride, pride is the thing that, that destroys a, a lot of good men and women because when the applause start when the pats on the back start it shifts from being about Jesus to being about me and we always have to have Jesus front and center my prayer always always my prayer is God don't let me go up there without you spirit of God I don't want to do this I will not do this without you he has to be first. So when we're listening and we're looking and, we're, and we're, we're, we're doing the things that we're doing where Christ is being brought in, where the, where the gospel is being brought into us, we should be listening and see if Jesus Christ is front and center. So when we listen to others, whether they are in the pulpit or sitting at your kitchen table, listen for Jesus. Amen. And secondly, let's look for humility. Paul says, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. Whether you're preaching from the pulpit or just sharing with friends, we must humble ourselves so that we become nothing and Jesus becomes everything. The problem with so many is that they have depended so much on their talents, on their giftings, that they've left Jesus behind in order to preach the gospel. One of Rally Point virtues is humility. It's the very first one, actually. Because none of the others can even take place in you until you have humility. Humility is, is me realizing and understanding that I've, I've fallen so short. That nothing about what I've done, nothing about me is about me. That I can add nothing to this that Jesus can do and does do everything. Humility is saying, I, 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 I can't do this task that I'm called to do unless God is doing it with me because it's because of God that I'm doing it. Humility is saying that I must empty out everything that I have to be filled up with totally all that Jesus is. I must grow smaller. I must decrease so that he must increase. That means my talents, my abilities must decrease so that Jesus can increase. Not just in what I'm saying, but in my life. 
I must decrease. Everything in me, all the, the old man, all the pride, all the lust, all the things in me that have been in me must decrease so that Christ can increase in me. And as Christ increases in me, he's displayed front and center. But we have to address it with humility. We have to, uh, we have to know that it's all about him and it's not about us. It's about Jesus. There's a story told about a brash young Scottish preacher that went into the pulpit with an easy apparent confidence or swagger. He knew his sermon would be good. Then the sermon bombed and he stepped down from the pulpit, dejected and humbled. An elder says to him, basically, if you would have gone up the way you came down, then you may have come down the way you went up. We must lead with humility. As, as, as much as, as much as you might see me and, and, and be like, Pastor West isn't afraid of anything, Pastor West, I'm, I'm terrified every time I come up here. I'm like, Lord, if you don't speak through me, then I can't do this. this I can't do it. I, I won't do it because I'm too afraid because I know that I can't do it on my own. He must lead before me. He must come up, and the Spirit of God must move in the room so that, so that I can then step into that place. But it takes us learning to be a little humble and operating in that place of humility. I, I, I love that that's the first virtue in the Rally Point Men's Ministry. It's humility. <laughs> it's one of those things that we can have one second and lose the very next. We should always be striving and willing to come under so that God can do a work. See, I, I, I am, I am, I am 100% confident that as God looks down on his sons and daughters, when he sees those walking in, in the spirit of humility, he says, that's someone that I can use. That's someone that I can do a work in. That's someone that I can change the world with. If we look at all the men in the Bible, Moses is the humblest man in the world. And God did such a work in him. If you, wanna, if you want God to do a work in your life, Work in the place of humility. Don't let pride steal your, steal your thunder. Don't let pride steal what God has for you. So as we're, as we're, we're listening and discerning, we should, we should discern, one, is Jesus front and center? And two, is this coming from a place of humility? Is this coming from a place where I know that that person that's sharing with me is sharing from a place for, from, of humility because if he is, that means that the Spirit of God is going to use him or her. We have too much craziness, too much just garbage that's out there in the world. And, and if you want your ears tickled, you can find it. But don't get angry. When you're standing before your Lord and Savior and he says, be gone from me, I never knew you. Don't get angry. But we have to, we have to have some, some sort of discernment within us to say, you know what, just, it's, not, it's, it's not a whole lot, it's just, just a few simple things. You know, hey, one is Jesus front and center because, because I want to know about Jesus. I want to hear Jesus. And two, what place is that person coming from? Are they coming from a place of humility or are they coming from a place of pride and arrogance? Is it about their giftings and their talents? Or is it about their Lord and Savior? I want everything in my life to be about Jesus. I wanna, I wanna speak Jesus, I wanna live Jesus, I wanna do Jesus, I wanna 
be like Jesus. I want everything in my life to emulate my Lord and Savior. And I pray that's what you want. I pray that's why you come to the house of God to hear about his son who sits at his right hand. I, I, I love this passage because Paul, I, I just keep going back to the point that Paul can, he could have come in and just been like, I know more than anyone in the room. But he didn't. He came in preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hallelujah. My goodness. My prayer every week is that my words would not be about me, but be about God. I want to preach Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Anybody here want to see Jesus? I want to see Jesus. And it all starts from a place of humility. So if we want to discern if Jesus is up front and, 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 and if, if we see Jesus up front and we also want to see if this person is coming from a place of humility or, or someplace else. And then finally, we must watch for the demonstration. Paul said, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of spirit and power. Oof. <laughs> he said, not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. <laughs> does, does anybody in here want the power of God in your life? If you want the power of God in your life, then you need to ha invite the spirit of God into your life. <laughs> the spirit, bless you, brings the power. So if we're not operating from a place of, of the Spirit moving upon us and within us and seeking the Spirit of God, then we probably won't see the power of God manifest. That's the demonstration of who God is. The word demonstrate means legal proof. Now, don't get me wrong, right? So, uh, you know, I know before I said, you know, that they don't, you don't want your gifts and your talents to be brought forward, but God has given us gifts and talents. But here's the thing. Our gifts and talents should not be the one that everyone sees. It should be Jesus who they see, and it should be the gifts and talents combined with the Holy Spirit that sets the hearts of the people free. And we get that backwards and confused. And then when that happens, right, because the hearts get moved, and when the hearts get moved, it's because the Holy Spirit now is involved, and he's moving the hearts of men. We can always tell what is being spoken and taught, if it's real or if it's not, by the demonstration that happens. So one of a couple of things might happen. So either the Spirit of God is going to move and touch the hearts, and as you're sitting there, you might be like, wow, I feel the Spirit of God. Man, this, that's a demonstration, the power of God. Because it's not coming from a man, it's coming from the spirit. And then there's the response. So when the, the speaker or whoever says, hey, who wants prayer? Who, who, who wants to be prayed for? Right? The spirit speaks to the spirit, and then all of a sudden a demonstration happens where you respond because the spirit of God is in the room, and he's doing something inside the room. I think so many of us, we don't understand or we get lost knowing that the Spirit of God is moving in the room. And so we're not, we're not willing participants to step into what the Spirit is doing. Instead, we sit back and we like, we're like, well, you know, this, that's not me. I don't really, I don't praise that way. I, I don't really worship that way. I'm just going to kind of do this thing here that I do, and, and I'll be fine, and I, I've been fine. But the Spirit of God is moving in the room, right? We have to be willing to be participants. Say, Lord, I'm here. I'm here, and if you're moving, I want to be a part of that. I want to see your, your power in my life. It is the power of God through his spirit that miracles happen. It is the power of God through his spirit that people are healed. It is the power of God through his spirit that, that nations are moved, that mountains are moved. It is the power of God through his spirit that changes the atmosphere when you walk into a room. 
That's the demonstration of God. <sighs> Check this out. Check this out. So, so you don't even have to do anything. You have the Spirit of God with you. You walk into the room, the atmosphere changes. Do you think that's you? <laughs> Man, I got the power. I want to change the atmosphere in this room. No. It's, it's because the Spirit is with me, and as I walk into the place, the Spirit changes the atmosphere because there's a man or woman of God in that place, and God is making a way for something to happen in that room. That's the demonstration of God. It doesn't mean that every time someone stands up and speaks that someone's going to get slain in the spirit or that someone's going to get saved, but it should mean that every time someone speaks that someone leaves this place more free, so that someone leaves this place better than when they came in because they encountered the living God. That's the demonstration that Paul is referring to. That when he spoke, people's lives were changed. And not because of the words he used, not because of the way that he said it, but because the Spirit of God was with him. And it touched the hearts of the people. I, I want to see people's lives changed. I, my desire is to see those that I encounter their lives change because of the Spirit of God in their lives. Not because of anything that I could say to them. Not because of anything that I can do for them. But because of the living God that enters into their lives. We can discern whether a, a sermon, whether a, a Bible study, whether uh, someone sitting at my table, a friend sharing the gospel with me, we can discern what is going on if Jesus is front and center, if this person is operating in the place of humility, and if there's a demonstration. Is my, is my spirit jumping inside my chest? Did not they say, was not our hearts on fire? Was not our hearts burning while he spoke? And I can't imagine Jesus walking with them, and he's preaching, and he's, he's oh, hallelujah. And, you know, in order to get their hearts to burn, he's just sharing the gospel with them. He's just sharing the passages from the Bible with them. And as he spoke, their hearts burned. That's the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. So we should see a demonstration. The Spirit of God should be there. I think about the pastor that I just spoke about. He went up prideful, came down humble. And there was no demonstration of the Spirit. I think I shared this with you before. And one of my, um, I took a, a preaching master class. And one of the, the, the young men who preached a mega church in Missouri somewhere, and, and he's like, you know, hey, one time, man, I, we had this service, and, and I was so excited because my mentor was coming, and I, was, I had my sermon ready to go, and I was about to preach this, and I was going to preach fire from the pulpit. He goes, and I got up there, and I preached, and I preached the sermon, and, and the service got over, and me and my mentor, we went out to eat, and I'm sitting there, and we're talking, and, and he's never bringing up my sermon. And, and, and we're talking, and I'm like, when is he going to say something? Like, what's going on here? And, he, and, and then he says, finally, I just said to him, well, what would you think about the sermon? And he says, my mentor looked at me, and he said, the sermon was okay, but you didn't have the Spirit of God with you. Whew. I don't want to do this if the Spirit of God is not with me. I don't want to do anything referencing God if the Spirit of God is not with me all the way as we go through it. That's the demonstration. Is the Spirit of God involved? Is the power of God involved? What is going on in the room? <laughs> One pastor once said that, <laughs> he told his deacons that if someone falls asleep in the congregation while he's preaching, wake the pastor up.
there should be a demonstration of God's power. See, I don't know about you guys, right, but I want his power in my life. And, and I know that by my humbling myself unto him, I know that by allowing him to enter my heart, I know that by allowing him to change my life, I know by allowing him to transform me, I know that making him the number one in my life, I know that by putting him front and center in my life, that he is gonna, sh gonna share his spirit with me and that he's gonna change me. And not just me, but he's gonna change those that are around me. Marissa and Eliana, Ashley, and my brothers and my sister and any friends that I have that I'm around. He's going to change them too because wherever I go, he's there. And if you spend enough time around Jesus, you can't help but be saved. So what are we looking at? What are we discerning when you're, sh when you're surfing your YouTube channels, when you're surfing your Instagram, your TikTok, right? All those different platforms, social media out there that we have access to that we can look at and look up sermons and look up things of God, right? What are we looking for? If, if, if Jesus isn't front and center, if it's not coming from a place of humility, and if there's no demonstration of the Spirit, then I have to wonder if that's God. I have to wonder where this is coming from. There's a red flag that start, kind of starts to raise and wave its hand at me saying, hey, be careful with this one. Be careful. We are the children of God. And if we're the children of God, then we, we have to understand that Jesus Christ is the center of it all. He is the center of it all. So that's what we should be seeking. That's what we should be searching for. That's what we should be listening for. Where is Jesus? Where? Where is Jesus? I, I find myself, when I, when I listen to other people, I find myself sitting there, and, and, and a lot of, sometimes I'll, I'll be like, wow, that's good. That's a good, that's a good angle to come from. Wow, that's a, that's a great argument that they have. But I'm listening. If I don't hear Jesus, I, I, I start to shut it down. I start to, my attention just starts to wane because I'm waiting for Jesus. I'm waiting for his spirit to come in. And if that doesn't happen for me, I stop the video, I shuffle on to the next thing. I, I, I stop paying attention. I stop registering because I need Jesus in my life. Not only anyone speaking things in my life that's false. Because I can't, I, I can't promise you what my mind might grab onto and want to bite onto. So I try my hardest not to allow myself to listen to stuff that I know just isn't going to feed me. Of God not of men. This thing, Christianity, it's of God, not of men. Amen. And everything that we should do, we do, should be of God. Stand with me. So I, I, I noticed something in, in the Bible, and... I had not noticed it before, but because this was on my mind, when I read it, it kind of stood out to me, right? And here's a great example of a demonstration of God. We see Moses. Moses was born to deliver the Hebrews. And Moses, growing up in the palace, still have access to his mother. And... I'm sure that they were reminding him, you're the savior of the Hebrews. So one day, Moses decides to take things into his own hands. He sees uh, uh, an Egyptian soldier uh, beating up on a Hebrew slave, and Moses goes in, 
to save the slave and kills the Egyptian, thinking that I'm the savior. And the next day he sees two Hebrews fighting, and, and he says, hey, why are you guys fighting? And one looks at him and says, what, are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? And because he didn't allow God to lead him into that place, he ended up running for his life. <laughs> but when he came back, <laughs> when he came back, God was leading the whole way. And all we saw was the demonstration of his power. You know, the last verse of this passage says, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. At the end of the day, this is, this is the final, the crux of the sermon, that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. It is the power of God that saved us. It's the power of God that changes us. It is the power of God that transformed us, that sent his only son to die for us. It is the power of God that gives you eternal life. It is the power of God. And I want to end with the way that I started, and that's with Jesus. Christ must be preached because he is the only one who can break yokes and tear down strongholds. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father unless they go through him first. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can't circumvent that passage. We can't walk around or get around Jesus. We might be able to circumvent our bosses at work. You might be able to circumvent uh, uh, your, your situations with your families at home. But you can't circumvent Jesus. Mm. So that your faith will not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. I love that. <laughs> Hallelujah. It should not be our words that sway you. What should sway you is the power of God that is moving in his spirit. That's the thing that should sway you. So our desires should be to know Jesus more, plain and simply. If the whole scripture, the whole Bible was written for him and about him, then our whole desire should be to know him. So tonight, my, my altar call is really, really simple. My altar call is a call for Jesus. So if you want more of Jesus, come to the altar. If, if you don't know him and you want to know him, come to the altar. If, Jesus, if you want Jesus to be the center of your life, then come to the altar. Because that's where the power of God is. That's where lives are changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we want our lives, we want everything that we do to be of you and not of us, not of men. Precious God, we want you, Jesus, to be the center of our lives. So, Lord, we dedicate this time, this moment, this space to you. Lord, that those that are here at the altar, Lord, that they're here because they want more of you, Jesus. Lord, they're here because, Lord, they want to go deeper with you. They want to have a more passionate, more personal relationship with you, Lord God. Lord, and I pray wherever they would go and whatever they would do, you would go first. Because you are worthy of all the praise and all the glory. You are worthy of our lives. 
You are worthy of our thoughts. You are worthy of our next breath. Precious God, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, let our lives, let our talk, let our speech, let our sermons be about Jesus Christ and him crucified. We thank you, Lord, and we love you. We glorify you. O Spirit of God, we love you. Have your way in your people. Lord, let them have a demonstration of your power that they might know that you are here. We love you so much. We give you all the glory and the praise for you are holy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you. power the name of Jesus. The only name that saves. The only name that 
Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes, it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. 